Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Congressman Hal Rogers checks in with the men and women of the National Guard who continue to provide much needed help to our region. And we continue to hear amazing stories of survival from everyday people here in Eastern Kentucky. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News this morning. Good morning to you. It's Friday. I'm Dakota Makeris. Thank you for waking up with us this morning. As always, let's take it over to Brandon for a look at our forecast this morning. Brandon, I know yesterday you and Steve Hensley sat down with the National Weather Service for a taping of issues and answers, and I kind of listened to some of it about the flooding that we just witnessed. Absolutely great information you all were talking about yesterday. I mean, I'm really looking forward to watching that on Monday. I, I, I asked Steve, I said, can I make that my story today? He said, well, think about it, but I have another story today anyway. But I just thought that information y'all were talking about is so will be so helpful for people to understand why and how the flooding sort of happened and, mm -hmm. you know, how you all were warning people ahead of time before it happened and things like that. I just thought it was very, very interesting. It was a good yeah. conversation for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, we'll have that on Monday night. Mm -hmm. So let's get into their forecast for now. And there's some rain out there this morning, unfortunately, across parts of the western half of the region, not parts of the areas that were most affected by last week's flooding. But again, some flood advisories ongoing out there. And I just seen something that we'll talk about more here in just a second uh, from the Weather Prediction Center. So uh, we'll get to that here shortly. But you see, again, the heaviest bands of rain back out to the west there through parts of Estill over toward uh, Jackson, Rock Castle, Pulaski, and Wayne County is now sneaking over into McCree County, too. We talked about the possibility for that. U.S. 119, U.S. 23 at Pikeville this morning. We're going to continue to watch the possibility for, again, a little bit of a dry conditions for the moment. We'll keep you posted on that as we get a little bit deeper into the day, which that could change pretty quickly a little bit deeper in the day as well. 64 Clintwood, 73 in Jackson only now. No more. Actually, Jackson and Pikeville it keeps changing up there just a little bit on both sides of that. But we're going to continue to watch that. And then across the state in region 68 in the Tri City, 72 Cincinnati, 75 Louisville and Bowling Green, Lexington 2 and 76 in Nashville. 85, the forecast high and the record, or no, excuse me, forecast and the average high, the record high is 93, set back on this date in 2005. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you. Hundreds of Kentuckians have lost everything they own after last week's deadly flash flooding. The recovery process will take months if not years right now families are faced with the daunting task of cleaning up and waiting for federal help to rebuild as chad hedrick explains one woman is still waiting for a response from fema and is afraid she'll be denied a sign for help next to cassandra scotland's driveway shows the desperation after losing her home to last week's flood i had a home that burnt in 08 and this is more devastating. Cassandra has to walk through thick, deep mud to get to her home, which was pushed off its foundation by the force of the water. The first time I saw it, I, I couldn't even get up to it because there was still water around it. The creek was right over there. Her home sits far on the other side of Route 15 from where Lost Creek is, raising several feet into her home. I've never seen nothing like it. Damage along Route 15 near the Breathitt Perry County line is indescribable. Homes wiped away, cars in creek beds. As hard as it is for me to ask for help, there's other people here too that's hurting worse than I am. Cassandra has applied for FEMA and is still waiting for a response. As the days pass, she's worried she won't get any help. I asked Governor Bashir about her concerns. Do not give up. If you're initially denied, appeal. Don't stop. We are talking to FEMA officials. Uh, I even mentioned to the president, we'll be having more of these conversations, that more people have to qualify for FEMA. The governor says rates from Western Kentucky after the tornadoes were, quote, far too low and unacceptable. For Cassandra, the funding will be a big relief, but says moral support can be just as helpful as she picks up the pieces. Even if you just got a kind word to say, to me or a word of encouragement, that's better than nothing. I, I could use that right now at this point. A helping hand and a bit of hope, something these families could really use. Chad Hedrick, WYMT Mountain News.
Congressman Hal Rogers flew across the region on Thursday, making stops at National Guard sites to check on those who are the boots on the ground. Yesterday morning, Congressman Rogers stopped in Hazard while surveying the flood impacted areas, taking time to meet with the men and women who have spent the last week as hovering heroes. He says the lives were lost in the tragedy and people are still missing. More than 500 people have been saved thanks to the work of the men and women in uniform who've done marvelous, heroic work over the last uh, 24, 48 hours. They've saved hundreds of lives uh, with uh, heroic rescues wrapping people from their rooftops. National Guard officials say of the more than 500 people rescued, nearly 80 of those were hoist saves, meaning they were people rescued from rooftops or trees as the waters raged below them. We continue to hear more stories of survival from those who were able to get out of floodwaters. Naomi Williams and her 82 year old grandmother Carolyn were the only two people in their home when the flood hit. They were treading water for more than an hour trying to reach a hill behind their home. Naomi says there wasn't much for her to grab onto as she and her grandmother climbed up a nearby mountain and stayed there for 16 hours. It was just a limb. It wasn't even a tree. A limb is what we held on to. And somehow I managed to pull us both out of the water. And when we got on the hill, we couldn't stay steady for like five minutes because when you stayed, the water kept on rising. So it was like a continuous climb up a steep mountain. And luckily, Naomi and Carolyn made it out of the hills with nothing but some scratches and poison ivy. Well, in Knott County, you'll hear similar stories of survival. Jer uh, Jordan Childers and his girlfriend lost everything during the flood last Thursday, and they are now working to clean up and rebuild. But some things they lost can't be bought. Our, ca our cars and tools, belongings, everything in the house could be replaced. But like her brother had recently passed away and her father, and like she had all their belongings in that building that washed away. And it's just some priceless things that can't, can't be bought. Well, the couple says all they have is each other and they're going to get through this together. WKCB is back on the air in Hindman and it did not take long to pick off to pick up, excuse me, where it left off. Randy Thompson says he has received hundreds of messages this past week from listeners saying they didn't realize how much they would miss the broadcast until the radio station was no longer to host them. As of Wednesday evening, the radio station was in a new building and back on the air. We uh uh, could be a, maybe a sense of hope for others that, you know, we got back on so quickly. And, and I couldn't have done it without these people that helped so much. But we salvaged, you know, enough equipment just to get it on. Thompson says seeing his community come together like they have has given him a great sense of hope. And he wishes to do that for his listeners as well. The Neon community in Letcher County is also sifting through mud and dust to clean up in one of the hardest hit areas of our region. Chandler Wilcox reports on the devastating impact the flood had on this small town and the work it will take to bounce back. Flood water broke through almost every home and business in Neon. I mean, there, there's not a house. There's not a house on this road that was not on this front street that did not get water in it. The water got so high that some businesses downtown were almost completely submerged and the pressure ripped apart furniture and destroyed technology. This church right here is the Church of Christ. The water was up on the front. It was up to the white. All you could see was the white and the roof. Now with broken structures and inches of mud, many homes and businesses are marked with no entry or big red X's to signal that it is not safe to walk through. This is Busy Bees. They lost everything. Signite Ministries. Locals are hard at work cleaning the streets, but trash continues to cover the ground. Look at the garbage. All that needs to be removed before it rains again. Even with the damage and debris, Paula still believes that the town will be repaired. We are going to come back and we're, it's going to be even better. Paula said she is thankful for all of the people who have come from outside the town to help clean up 
She also said they are grateful that Neon Lights has housed the City Hall after it was destroyed. At Neon, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Well, Mayor Paul Sasso said she hopes FEMA can set up a mobile site in Neon. FEMA does have mobile sites now in Whitesburg and Jenkins. People in Owsley County can now apply for FEMA individual assistance following last week's severe flooding. Owsley is the eighth county in the region to be approved for individual assistance following Breathitt, Clay, Floyd, Knott, Letcher, Perry, and Pike. Survivors in the designated counties can apply online at disasterassistance.gov by calling 800-621-3362 or by using the FEMA mobile app. Applicants will need to provide the following information, a current phone number where you can be contacted, your address at the time of the disaster and the address where you are now staying, your social security number, a general list of damage and losses, banking information if you choose direct deposit, and if you're insured, the policy number or the agent or the company name, you can also find a list of mobile registration sites over on WYMT.com. Six eleven here on this Friday morning. We're still tracking some rain off to our west, but that seems to be where it's staying for the moment. We're continuing to track that heavy rain on live pinpoint Doppler radar, and you'll see that it is still coming down pretty good there across the western half of the region, covering parts of Pulaski, McCreary, uh, Wayne counties over through Rock Castle, Jackson, and now Estill counties trying to sneak over into Powell this morning, and that will eventually move its way to the east a little bit later today. We're looking at temperatures between 64 and Clintwood, and 73 in Jackson and Pikeville this morning. Lots of low 70s and upper 60s out there. 85 this afternoon. Flood watch already in effect. Rain chances will continue off and on throughout the day, and some of those could be heavy at times. And again, heavy rain is possible both today and tomorrow, and a soggy pattern is setting up, especially as we head into early next week. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you so much. When we come back here on Mountain News this morning, the federal government prepares to release some extra resources to fight against the latest public health emergency here in the U.S.